all right what's going on guys and gals and we are back with casper and today we're going to be doing a little work to him so basically all the work we're doing is in here so what we have to do is tear this dash apart and i'll explain why here do you see that flashlight i got taped to the steering column well <laughs> that's my dash lights right now they kind of quit working so this switch here actually got hot like one day I was driving down the road and my dash lights got real dim to the point I couldn't see them. And my fiance said something about, I don't know how you tolerate these really dim dash lights. And I said, they're not usually that dim. Something's going on here. And, and at, at that point, I couldn't even control the dimness of them at all. I mean, I could just see enough to where I could tell where the speedometer needle, needle was and that was it. And then coming home that weekend, I started smelling like a slight burning smell. And luckily I was like 15 minutes from home when I smelled this, but I got home, this switch was like literally hot to the touch. So, what I did is I got on the fuse box here, and I forget what number fuse it is, but I pulled the fuse to this, uh, these dash lights. That way I'm not driving down the road and there's a fire. And also while we're in here, we're going to replace this, this knob for the headlights. And it's like once in a while the headlights will turn off and I hit a bump and they turn back on. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. And also another issue I had, which I temporarily fixed, but while I'm in here, I'll fix it right. The odometer quit working. So what we're going to end up doing there is taking out this whole cluster. And there's there's like a little worm gear that spins the odometer itself. So I'll I'll show you the parts here in a little bit and see what we're talking about here. All right, so here's our little stock of parts we got here, Ford Motorcraft, and I actually purchased everything right here from PartsGeek.com. Very good site, delivery is very prompt. I mean, as far as their service goes, I do recommend them very highly, and I will put links down below to all three of these parts. So let's get into the breakdown of the parts here. So in this box, this is our headlight switch. You can see the knob goes here. That's the LED to light the uh, icon beside the switch. And then, of course, the plug-ins on the back. Which it should be pretty easy once we get that dash panel off. And then here's what's beside it. What was the main culprit of the whole thing. This is for the dash lights and the interior light. Of course, turn it around, you got your plug. And this is something else. I was researching this. I was going to pull one of these off of a 98 Ranger, which is two years newer than mine. And I'm glad I didn't, because upon researching this, 98s and up only have a four-prong plug, whereas this has a six. So it's kind of a good thing I decided not to do that. But this piece here is very expensive. I, I, paid, <coughs> I paid like 200 bucks for it. To go through the dealer, probably another 50 more. I think this here was around 30 or 40. And then this is the little piece I was talking about here with the mileage. This is the worm gear that turn, that actually turns the odometer, which I'll show you how all that works once I pull the whole cluster out. But that itself, I believe, was like 20 bucks, and the shipping almost doubled it. But anyhow, here's the invoices. So yeah, that's the switch. Actually, it doesn't say how much it was on the paper here. But I figured, total these parts are around 250, almost 300 bucks. Alright, here's the other parts. Yeah, I think that's everything. But, anyhow, we'll get to tearing this dash apart and we'll see you later. Okay, now before starting any sort of project that's electrical on any vehicle, what you want to do is you want to pop your hood. And disconnect your battery. Because you could have a potential of frying th things in your electrical system. There we go, we're open. Trusty 3 liter V6. Not much for power, but definitely reliable. But alright, we'll go ahead and unhook the battery. 
All right, terminals are loosened up. And yeah, I did put newer terminals on this not long ago. So we have no power to the truck. So now we can really get started. All right, so we're back in the truck and I I think I forgot to mention at the beginning the beginning of this video this procedure should be the same, if not at least similar, if you own anywhere between a 95 and an 03 Ranger or Explorer. Because dashboards, they changed them in 95 when the whole Explorer changed, so then they carried that over to the Ranger. 94 and back, they had the square looking dashes, which were totally different. But anyhow, first comes first, which this usually isn't a procedure in those trucks, but it is here. We're going to remove the dash lights. And it did a pretty good job of lighting the dash, but it's just, <laughs> it's kind of a redneck way of doing it. But hey, it got me through the last six months. I can't complain about that. My fiance just laughs about it. Oh, well. All right, so we are going to start off by popping this bezel where the radio is. So what we want to do, I'm going to put the e-brake on so we don't roll away here. Move the gear shift. And I'm going to have to move this out of the way too, which is also not really a procedure in the 95 to 03s. But yeah, this will have to come out first in order to even get this piece out. So what we have here, I might have went over this in the stereo install. We got two bolts here holding this in, and it should pop right out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, the two bolts are out. They're 7 millimeter, by the way. And all this should do is just pop right out like that and just enough to get it out of the way I guess so there we go that's out of the way so now we have to work on getting this piece which something to think about if you guys have automatic transmissions especially the Explorers yeah you have to move the shifter to get this up but I mean here we don't obviously we don't have that problem being a stick shift so let's go ahead and work on this part okay so the next thing that needs to go is this this little kick panel here which all it does is clip in up here and then down here we got a couple screws holding it so we'll have to remove those and completely remove it so I think that's also seven mil yeah it is yeah, it's always a good idea to put your screws in a dish so you don't misplace them. Because that would suck if you don't have enough, yeah, enough parts to do this. So, got one over here as well. That's your OBD2 port right there. And we got another one holding it up here. Yeah, I think it's the hood latch. All right, be right back. All right, so yeah, had to remove the hood latch. That's held on by two bolts, and you got a bolt on each end. So basically, you got two clips up here and four bolts holding this on. So now, I'm gonna have to remove this metal piece as well because there's two bolts under here I have to get to to get this piece off. So we'll go ahead and remove that as well. A little bit bigger on that one we'll be back all right so yeah you need eight mils on this one and yeah we got to remove one two three four five six so we'll be back with you once we get this off all right the top two are removed so i think what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and sneak the ratchet in on these two bolts down here and hopefully we'll be able to get this out no problem so once we do that, we're also going to have to remove three bolts. I don't know how good you can see that. There's three bolts across the top of that cluster. Like, I think it's like one, two, three, right across there. So we need to at least remove those five bolts. And I think there's one in here behind the radio that needs removed too. So we'll get them six bolts and that should pop right out. All right, so it took a seven millimeter remove to remove all these. It turns out we don't have to remove this one. It's just clipped in right here. So we got it loose, as you can see. Just kind of carefully pry at it. 
can even stick your hand in there. And there we go. So this is the part where the automatic shifter would kind of get in the way, but being this is a stick, like I said earlier, hell of a lot, hell of a lot easier. So, all right, so we have access to where our controls are. So the next order of business is removing all this. So I'm gonna try and get this loose. And then we'll unplug, oh, that broke. Unplug the headlight. Well, the wiring harness at least, at least looks good. All right, so we got it kind of moved out of the way, so we got to pry this clip off. And there we go, we are disconnected from it. So yeah, we'll take it in the hobby room here. All right, so now we got to remove the components from the back of here. So I don't think this will be too bad here. This is the expensive piece. But I may have to Gorilla Glue <laughs> this headlight switch back on. There's only two screws right there holding that on. Kind of hard to do one-handed. All right, so that's removed and Is it just me or does that look burned up? I don't know, it doesn't look good, does it? We'll compare it with the other one here. Yeah, it almost caught fire, I'd say. I bet you if I take this apart, it's gonna be all burned up inside. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the video. We'll dissect it. But anyhow, we gotta remove this. All right, so, did a little bit of prying, the knob came off, and so did the plastic mounts. Well, shit. What are we going to do there? Well, I may go to Lowe's and buy some Gorilla Glue. Kind of glue them back in. So, I may have to make a stop before this is done. But, not too hard to remove. So, in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and put this, uh, this switch back in. The new one, of course. And, yeah, it just goes right in place of the old one and just screw it back in pretty simple all right so i figured out a little trick here i took and glued these standoffs back in using pvc cement so we'll see how that holds so we'll get the knob back in here and get this all put back together and see how that works all right, well those standoffs are drying. I figure we'll just take this cluster out a while and we'll get to work on this part of it. So I think it's five millimeter bolts holding this in. Like you got three across the top and yeah, one here in the corner, one here in that corner. But yeah, it's not too hard to remove since all this is already removed. So I figured while we're replacing these switches, I may as well just take it on further and fix this right too. So, all right, we'll get the five mil out and get started here. All right, correction, 5.5 .5 millimeter. But anyhow, there were seven screws. I forgot about the two there around the steering column. They were kind of difficult to get to, but we're gonna pull this out here. The front will come off. You want to be careful not to move the gauges. You want to keep them in the place where they are, or they're going to read wrong. So, hold on a minute. All right, so we got the front piece off, and you can see it's like modules going across here. So, if you have a Ranger without a tack, it wouldn't be hard to add one. So, we'll still have to remove the bolt here and here to get this front piece off. And yeah, as you can see, it's like they crossed off the word Ford on that module. That's kind of funny. But yeah, we'll get these out, and this this should come right out, and then we just got to unplug some wires. So, yeah, 7 mil bolt to get this. We got one on each corner, it looks like. 
if it'll focus. Like I said, be not be careful not to bump your gauges when you're doing this. All right, we'll be with you soon. And we're back. All right, so the screws are removed. And yeah, we can almost slide it right out. So I guess you tilt it like this. All right, so yeah, we got a few plugs removed back there and it's gonna be loose. So yeah, stay tuned. All right, so we got it removed. You can see those three plugs right there go to the back of it. So if, if we go around back to this, be careful not to drop this, that would suck. So yeah, this is where, there's where the one plug goes, another one, and the third one. So yeah, you want to remember to plug all this back in when you put this back, back together, or it's going to act weird as hell. So we'll go ahead and take it in here and take this apart. All right, so there's the cluster on the workbench, and I'll show you why this video does not apply to anything further back than 95 with these trucks. So I have the old cluster here from my 93, which definitely 93 and 94. I'm assuming the second gens, 89 through 92, was the same way as this. And this one here had two plugs and then cable driven. But if you look at the back of these newer ones, no cable. It's all electronic. So, yeah, this is right where they changed all that. And then, going back to the headlight switch, this is what the headlight switch looks like on 94 and back, which I'm assuming second gen's the same as 93 and 94. So basically, this does everything that the two switches I'm replacing does on the older Rangers. So, back to this at hand. I think the way this works is we got to remove the modules to get to the back of this, to get to the back of the odometer. So yeah, these two side ones have to come off first in order to get this middle one out. So I pried very carefully with my tweaker here, and that will come right up. And basically these pins under here will plug in down here. And yeah, I didn't think about this, but it'd be, be a good time, good time to change your dash lights if you have the bulbs available. And then we'll take this one out. I think that's the trip meter reset right there. So, all right, so we have to carefully pry. I don't know how good you can see that. Get this started very carefully. Like I said, try to make the gauges where they were when you first removed it. All right, so that side is out, and like same thing here. You got the pins, so now the middle should come right out. Then just go ahead and pry it here real gently. Kind of hard to do this and hold the camera, isn't it? And I forgot to note about the automatic transmissions. That would be another obstacle in an automatic if you were removing this cluster. But since we have a manual and there's nothing there to worry about as far as shifting indicator, we're good to go. Now if these get knocked out of whack, I mean that's not a big deal. I could just put them back on the pin again. So what the hell is this fuel reset? Must be a feature that I don't have. All right, so that's removed. Of course that's your fake shifting indicator. We'll put this off to the side here somewhere. So, we'll go around back, and these are the little motors that, that uh, control the thing. That's your odometer motor right there, which we have to remove that. And it's plugged into this board right here, so we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so the motor's removed, it's unplugged, and way down in there, that's the gear that turns the miles, but... This is the culprit that broke. 
and luckily I really glued this on and had just enough to keep turning the miles. I did this, I think it helped for like 35,000 miles almost, or maybe not quite 35,000, but anyhow, we're going to replace this little gear right here. Since we're in there, we'll just do it right. So that's where this comes in. So yeah, we'll swap that and put the motor back in and get it all back together. All right, we got the new gear installed on the motor, and as soon as I took this one off, it just went to pieces. I think, I'm not sure, I may have JB welded this together. I had a hell of a time trying to get back, get that back together. I'm, I'm honestly surprised it held that long. But anyhow, there's the new gear. We're going to prop you guys up here. And we're going to put this back in. So... Trying to see how well you can see there. So it'll go in here, just like you're sticking it in the pussy. <laughs> so we turn it, clips into place. And then we plug it back into the board. I think the plug turns around like this. Yeah, and we plug it in. Come on, focus. Yeah, right there. We plug it in right there. And that's that. All right, so pretty much the process is a reverse of what we just did. So we're going to put this back here like so. And you can see, like the other two sides, the prongs. And I got my fake shifting indicator right there. Kind of hard to do this one-handed. All right, so it should should fall right into place. All right, so everything is flat there. All right, so now we have to reinstall the sides. And it's ready to go back in. Alright, I figure while we have this apart, before I put it all back in, a little dusty here. So, very perfect opportunity to get this cleaned up before we put this back together. So, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ass cleaner. No, I'm sorry, I meant glass cleaner. We'll hit it with that and then get it back together here shortly. Okay, it's all cleaned up. So, I kind of had like a... A brain fart or a stupid moment. I just realized I didn't have to take this front piece off when I took it out of the truck. So basically I can put it all back to, back together right here and then just secure the four bolts on each side when I get it back in the dash. So while we're at the bench we're gonna put this front back together here with our five and a half millimeter socket and we'll get back to you. Alright so let's go ahead and put this back in the truck. So, like I said earlier, you got your three plugs. Yeah, I'll get back to you here. Alright, so it's all plugged back in. And, yeah, four bolts. And we got this back in here. So, we'll grab our 7mm socket. I think it's this bolt. We'll get her all wrapped up. Alright, our cluster is back in. Sweet. All bolted up. All three plugs plugged in. And yeah, the plugs on the back of this, you can't really get them wrong because their clips are at certain spots. So, I guess what's left to, left to do now is to finish the light switches. So, the standoffs on that piece ought to be dry by now. So, we're going to go ahead and check that and... Maybe put the switch in the piece here, and we'll go from there. All right, well, I would say our standoffs are good and solid now. That's that's a, that's a common problem with these certain dashboards. It's like years of turning that knob actually will break these loose. And figuring this is a 22-year-old truck, no surprise they were broke. But it's, it's almost all of them, really. But all right, we'll go ahead and put the switch back in. 
All right, so the headlight switch is back in the panel, and yeah, that standoff did split, but I told him to put more rubber cement on it, but yeah, it actually feels a lot more solid now, but we'll see how that lasts. And this feels a lot more smooth too. So, yeah, we're going to clean this piece up real quick before we put it back on, and we'll see you later. All right, so we're back in the truck. Piece is cleaned up. It's as good as I could get it anyway. So, we're going to go ahead and get this all back in here. Actually, I better plug these in first. Hold on a minute. All right, so they're all plugged in. I'm gonna at least try and get this fitted here before I screw this all up. Well, well, not screw this all up, but before I screw it all back together, I just want to make sure this stuff works. So, yeah, hold on while I try and work this thing in. All right, I think we about got it in here. a little finagling sometimes. You got a clip here and a clip here. All right, I think we got this side. Oh, I got to go down below that middle piece. That's right. Okay, so we got the top in. Just got to get the three screws there, there, and there. And then, yeah, that clips in. Wow, it does feel solid. All right. All right, so we're getting, go ahead and hook the battery back up. And of course, tighten it. All right, battery is tight. So we'll go back around in here. And I gotta put the fuse back in over here for the this dimmer to work. So where in the hell did I put that little panel? Oh, here it is. I put it in my stash of spares here, and I'm I'm pretty sure it was the 7.5 that I had to take out. So we'll take it out of the spare holder here. And was it slot seven? I believe it was. Put it back in here. All right, dim light works. See if the headlights are on. So yeah, we do have our headlights. I can't tell whether or not those are on or not. All right, well, since it's broad daylight out, I couldn't tell. So I took and put a shirt over the dash. And look at this. And when I dim it, it dims. Nice. Turn them off, they turn off. So yeah, hell yeah, definitely a win. It better be. I mean, that fucking switch was $200, man. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so we have everything back together now. So we're going to do a test drive and make sure the odometer still works. So as we get ready to leave here, we are registering 134.267. All right, well... Let me put you guys down for a minute while I put my seatbelt on. Oh man, that headlight switch feels so solid, I'm telling you. Alright. Yeah, yeah, set up the stereo. Well, we don't need copyright flags anyway. Alright. I said, hope 
if I turn the e-brake off. So, as we go here, do -do -do. just pay attention to the odometer. Yeah, I know I gotta fix that EBS light too. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, let's go. All right, our tense cluster is turning. So, I don't know, I'd say it's working. We'll drive a little bit further just to make sure the main one's working. Up, oh, car coming. Yeah, sorry for the weird angles. I'm trying to hold the phone and the steering wheel at the same time as I'm shifting. If it'll turn another mile, I'll be happy. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. I'd call that a win, too. So, yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to post links to all those parts that I used on here. To uh, partskeek.com. And as far as that dimmer switch goes, like I said, that only works up to uh, 97 in the Rangers. So if you own a 98 Ranger or newer, it's, it's going to be a different part number. But other than that, the other two parts I think will crossfit all the way up to 03. With both uh, Rangers and Explorers. But I'll get turned around here and I'll see you back at the house. Alright, so we're back in the hobby room and upon taking this apart... I don't see nothing burned up or anything. I mean, nothing that looks physically damaged. I mean, the board looks fine. I don't know if it just got hot there and discolored it, but I mean, nothing looks burnt. But I, I honestly, I think the resistor inside of this switch here is what went, what basically was going bad. And then you take a look here. These two prongs go to that dimmer switch. And then these four are basically for like the dome light. So, yeah, that's what you got. But 200 bucks for this? Really, Ford? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps some of you guys out there as far as replacing this switch and what to do about your headlight switch or your odometer. So, all right. Well, we'll see you later. All right, so now it's dark. It's about 9.30 at night. So we'll give it the true nighttime test. I figure, since I didn't have the video uploaded yet, I'll just throw this clip in at the end of it. So, we'll shut the door. Hell yeah! It even dims. And we had nothing down here either. So, yeah, definitely a win. But, yeah, we'll see you next vid.